But first tonight, the faulty evidence put to the jury in the conviction of Henry Keogh will at last appear quite unmistakable and totally unacceptable if we're to restore confidence in our justice system. Last week, the state's former chief forensic pathologist, Dr Colin Maddock, gave evidence under oath in a medical board inquiry into his work in the Keogh case. What's emerged, though, and what's now on record are conflicting reports over and over again with evidence put to two juries in Henry Keogh's trials. And it wasn't just Dr Manick who appears to have given conflicting reports. Evidence of other witnesses at the trial has now also come under serious question. Now would be the appropriate time for the Solicitor General to respond to calls for an independent inquiry into the case and perhaps, as Keogh's lawyers are saying, time too to call in the police. Graham Archer has this story. It's hard to imagine a matter more serious for the legal system than something of this sort. I find it difficult to think that, that there'd be many, if any, other pathologists in Australia who'd be comfortable uh, with proposing a murder scenario in court and saying that's what I really think this case is. And, for me, I, I need to be able to, you know, get to sleep at 11 o'clock at night and, and have eight hours sleep, so that's not the sort of thing I could have done in this case. We're getting much, much closer to what did and did not happen the night of March 18th, 1994. The night Anna Jane Cheney died. Is this case big enough and the implications of this case big enough to demand a Royal Commission? Oh, without a doubt. I hadn't, in all of my years of studying legal cases, ever come across a case that remotely comes as close as this one has to a complete failure of procedures. What's been suspected for years took a giant step towards reality last week when Dr Colin Manock, the state's chief forensic pathologist for almost 30 years, faced a medical board hearing into the competence of his work in the conviction of Henry Keogh while claiming the rest of the world had not caught up with him, in so many alarming ways, Dr Manock's evidence, under oath, conflicted dramatically with what he'd told a committal hearing and two murder trials ten years ago. You only need one item of evidence which says it couldn't have happened to prove it didn't happen. We'll begin with the bruises on Anna Jane's left leg, so important to the prosecution's case. In fact, former DPP Paul Rofe told the court they were... The one positive indication of murder, namely the grip mark on the bottom of the leg. The one positive indication of murder. But crucial to complete the grip theory was whether the so-called thumb bruise on the inside of the calf actually existed. Every pathologist who has examined the tissue taken from that spot under a microscope has failed to find evidence of a bruise. Not Professor Stephen Cordner? I think there would be very few of any pathologist in Australia who would go to court and say this means the leg was gripped by hand. Not Associate Professor Tony Thomas? The information that's come, gone to the court, do you think that's been dealt with satisfactorily? I think one would have to say no. Not Dr Byron Collins? The material that, uh, of this, from this specimen that's looked at under the microscope shows minimal, if any, bruising at all. Add to the list, most recently, Dr Manock's own colleague, Dr Ross James, who's now conceded to the medical board. When I looked at the histological section purported to have been taken from this area, I would not describe what I saw in the sample as a bruise. But now, the real bombshell. Dr Manock himself has now admitted he couldn't find proof of a bruise either. So we looked at it, thought it might be a bruise, put it under the microscope couldn't find any scientific evidence of a bruise, but said it was a bruise anyway. That's correct. But he kept this extraordinary fact to himself. And he said that he didn't inform the Director of Public Prosecutions of that fact. He didn't? He did not. Dr Bob Moles has just completed a book called A State of Injustice, which examines a number of Dr Manock's cases. But what he's heard in the last few days has shocked him. And every other pathologist who's looked at that slide and this is the bruise on the inside of the calf, has said it's almost certainly not a bruise. 
Oh, absolutely. Well, they've said that there's no scientific evidence that there is a bruise at that location. And we always understood that that was a conflict between the other pathologists and Dr. Manock. But Dr. Manock, in his evidence at the medical board, said, in fact, it's not a conflict because he agrees with them. But even so, none of this stopped Dr. Manock from suggesting to the jury that he had found proof of a bruise. All the bruises appeared to be the same. The ones examined microscopically appeared to be less than four hours old. Next, he changed his evidence over which hand he claimed Henry Keogh had used to grip and lift Anna Jane's legs. Dr Mannix said very clearly before the medical board that it had always been his position that the marks on the left leg of the deceased had been caused by a left hand. And is that consistent with evidence he'd given in the trials? No, it's not. Here is what he actually told the jury. I placed my left hand behind the lower leg and found that I could fit my three fingers and thumb against the bruises that were present, so that it was possible it was caused by a grip. From their position and shape, are you able to say which hand was used? It would appear to be the right hand. Left hand one minute, right hand the next, and now that's all changed again. How does he explain that? He indicated that there may have been some inaccuracy in the transcript of the trial. Two trials? Yes. Inaccuracy in two trials? Yes. Then there's the question of weighing the lungs, something you might think important in suspected drownings. Dr Manock told the medical board he did take weights, but his assistant wiped them off the whiteboard while he was on the phone. But here's what Dr Manock said at the committal hearing. Did you weigh the lungs? No, I did not. Well, clearly that's in conflict too, isn't it? Yes. What's even more concerning is that in 2001, this document mysteriously appeared, bearing Dr Manock's handwriting, noting the weight of the lungs. Given the evidence that's been given before the medical board, that there must be even more serious doubts about the evidence that had been given at the trial of Mr Keogh. The contradictions continued over the contentious black and white autopsy photographs. Photographer Murray Billet claimed in his witness statement to have been instructed to take only black and white photographs. And on this point, Dr Manick has a strong supporter in the Attorney General Michael Atkinson, who informed Parliament... Today tonight would have its viewers believe there was something sinister about the photographs taken during the autopsy. Sinister is Atkinson's word. We'll settle at this stage for just incompetent. And it seems almost every eminent expert here and overseas agrees with us, including internationally renowned pathologist Professor white Derek photograph. Pounder. But you would never take a black and white photograph instead of a colour photograph. And forensic photographic expert, Associate Professor Gail Spring. Now, I've been in uh, forensic uh, and in, in pathology for, uh, well, since 1976, and I've never known anything other than using colour. But determined to dig an even deeper grave for his credibility, Atkinson went further. In 1994, it was policy of the State Forensic Science Centre to take only black and white photographs. Therefore, it is quite wrong to suggest that the use of black and white photographs was a poor technique. It was good practice. But not even Dr Manock supports the AG, as he's now said he did request colour photos. Well, he indicated that, in fact, he'd given instructions to his laboratory technician to take a certain number of photographs, including full body photographs, so that the body could be identified. And he also said that he'd asked the police to take colour photographs. Now, apparently none of that happened. So, even though he instructed someone to take the photographs, and they didn't, he took it no further. Well, it appears that he had instructed more than one person to take photographs, and they failed to take either the number of photographs, or in fact, colour photographs, as he had apparently instructed them to do, or requested that they do. What will the Attorney General, or his replacement, now tell Parliament? But this brings us to the level of the bathwater. As we've revealed from the police photographs, the bath appears to have been only around one third full. And as such, not deep enough to drown Anna Jane in the way the prosecution claims. Now, another revelation from Dr Manock. And 
If it was one third full, what did he say? Well, Dr Manick said that if it was only one third full, then he wouldn't have put that proposition about the murder scenario to the jury. Is there any evidence that Dr Manock tested or attempted to test what might be the real level of the water in the bath? No, he didn't do any measurements, any checking, any calculations about the level of water himself. The more evidence that emerges in this case, the less credible the original investigation and prosecution becomes. But what about that proposal? You, you let us with an independent expert or experts as appropriate look at it, deal with it, clear the air, because it won't go away. As far as I'm concerned, it has, we've done, we've gone down that track. As it's turned out, it's the DPP who's gone away, while we're left with the question of will someone now face up to these issues? Keogh's barrister, Kevin Borick, QC. What do you propose to do now? We'll now have to refer it to the police. There's evidence there that we think is important, which should be referred to the police. Where should this go from here? It seems to me that the only sensible thing that can be done now is for the Solicitor General, who's already reviewing this matter, to make an urgent request to the Medical Board to be provided with a transcript of the hearings over this last week. I'm quite confident that if the Solicitor General reviews that transcript, he would then have to advise the Attorney General that Mr Keogh be released pending the rehearing of the matter before some appropriate tribunal.